Hello guys, today I am going to discuss with you dates in prior tax function in Power BI. It comes under time intelligence tax function category. First, leave your understand definition and syntax, then we will move to practical part. So, just have a look here. Returns a table that contains a column of dates that begins with the start date and continues for the specified number of intervals. Now, look into the syntax. Here we have four arguments. In first argument, you will pass the date column name. In second argument, you will pass the expression from where you want to start date, right? In third argument, you will pass the interval number and in fourth argument, you will pass the interval name like day, month, quarter and year. And here we have one important point. It does not support the direct query mode. Now look into the my data set. Here I am using orders data set and under order data set, I have order date column. Okay, so you can see here the output of my order date column and here I have date from 1st January 2015 to till 30th June 2015, right? Now we will generate the date table using dates in period tax function. So for this, you have to click on modeling tab, then click to table. When you will click to table, it will open the one tax query window like this and here I already write the tax query. So firstly, you have to change your table name. So I mentioned dates in period table, right? This is my table name. Then equal to after that, you have to write tax function. So tax function name is dates in period. Then open the bracket and in first argument, you will pass the date column name. Okay. So order date is my date column and orders is my data set name. Then in second argument, you will pass the date expression from where you want to start date right so here i enter manually date so for this i use date dax function then i write the year then comma month comma day right because i want to generate the date from 1st march 2015 so here i enter date manually in second argument in third argument pass the number of interval so i pass 15 and in fourth argument i pass the interval name day so it will generate the date from 1st March 2015 to till 15th March 2015 because it will start the date from 1st March and I pass 15 as an interval number. So it will generate the date from 1st March to till 15th March. Now simply click to commit. So when you click to commit, it will generate the table like this. You can see here with single order date column. Now I am going to take table visual to display my new date column. So I simply drag order date column here and then I go to the visualizations and then I simply right click order date and then select order date. So you can see here the output. It generated the date from 1st March 2015 to till 15th March 2015. And here is one important point. It will return only existing date which is exist in your order date column. If in your date column there is no date for 3rd, 4th and 5th March, so it will not return. It will return only existing date. Okay. So in my data set, I have 1st to 15th March date. So that's why it returns all dates. It's totally depend on your order date column dates. Now again, open to the tax query and instead of 15 if i simply mention 3 so it will generate the date from 1st march to 3rd march right simply click to commit now see the output see it generate the date from 1st march 2015 to till 3rd march 2015 okay so hope you clear how it is working right now instead of day if i simply mention month and instead of 3 if i simply mention 2 number of interval 2 so it will generate the date from March to April right first March 2015 to April let's have a look simply click to commit and now see the output so you can see here it starts the date from first March 2015 to till April last 30th April 2015 right now instead of 2 if I simply mention 1 so it will return March month dates right it will generate the date from first March to till last March okay because here date is one and I passed number of interval one and interval name is month so it will return 
March month dates. And if I simply click to commit, now see the output. See, it generated the date from 1st of March 2015 to till last March, 31st March. Okay. And if I simply mention minus one number of interval, then it will minus the one month from current month. So it will generate the date from Feb, right? Now let's have a look. Click to commit and now see the output. See, it generated the date from 2nd Feb 2015 to till 1st March 2015 because here I pass start date from 1st March 2015 and number of interval is minus one and in interval name is month. Okay. So hope you understand how it is working with minus one interval and plus interval number right and now instead of month if i simply pass quarter and here i start date from january 1st 2015 and instead of minus if i simply pass one so it will return the three month data because in one quarter we have three months right january february march so it will generate the date accordingly so simply click to commit now see the output 1st January 2015 to till 31st March 2015 okay and instead of 1 if I simply pass 2 so it will generate the 2 quarter data right from 1st January 2015 it will totally depend on start date right if I passed Feb 1st Feb 2015 then I passed number of interval 1 and quarter so it will generate the date accordingly okay so it will start the date from first fab and then it will add three months because in one quarter we have three months so it will start a date from first fab 2015 so that means fab march and april right because in one quarter we have three months it will count the quarter from first fab okay then click to commit now see the output so you can see here generate the date from 1st Feb 2015 to till April C 30 April because here I pass start date 1st Feb 2015 and interval is quarter right so it will count the quarter from Feb month so Feb March and April that is called first quarter right so hope you understand how it is working with quarter day month and minus one number and if i simply pass june first instead of june first if i simply pass 30 june 2015 and then i pass minus one quarter so for this it will generate the quarter from april may and june then click to commit and now see the output so you can see here if i go to up see it generates the data from 1st april 2015 to till 30 june 2015 okay and now i simply pass here and i start the date from 1st january 2015 and i simply pass here one and then i click to commit so it will return the whole year dates see you can see here 1st january 2015 to till 30 june 2015 reason behind in my order date 30 june 2015 is last date okay so it generated the date from 1st january 2015 to till 30 june 2015 Okay, guys. So, hope you clear how dates in period DAX function is working with intervals, right? Now, I will show you the one alternate way to handle the manual dates. So, earlier we are passing manual date like this. Okay. So, suppose you want to consider minimum date as a your start date. So, instead of this manual date you simply write the min tax function and pass your order date here so it will get your minimum order date from your date column 
and then you can perform the operation accordingly right so see here i simply get minimum date from my orders data set right and then it will consider my minimum date as a start date and then it will generate the date accordingly so you can see here if i simply click to commit so it will generate the date accordingly so if you notice in my data set first january 2015 is minimum date so it will generate the date from first january 2015 to last date which is 30 june 2015 right because here i simply passed minimum date and if i pass max date instead of min so in my data set max date is 30 june right and if i simply pass minus 1 and here i pass day right so 30 june 2015 is last date in my data set and here i pass minus 2 and then i pass in the name day then click to commit so it will return the two days 29 june and 30 june so you can see here okay so instead of manual date you can use max and minimum date accordingly so this is one way to handle the manual date now i will use same dex function with measures so here i already created measure so you can see here See here this is measure 4 and it's in period tax function so here i want to get total sales of 15 days right from start date so using this tax measure you can calculate the sales on the basis of given interval right so you can see here in start date i simply passed first january 2015 and in interval name i passed day and in interval number i passed 15 and here I use calculate tax function with sum tax function right so it will return the sum of 15 days sales because in start date I passed 1st January 2015 and in number of interval I passed 15 okay then simply click to commit so if I drag one card visual to display the sales of 15 days so firstly let me drag card visual and then I simply drag times in period measure. So you can see here this is 15 days sale. See this is 15 days sale. And if I change measure instead of 15 days, if I simply mention 2, so it will return the 2 day sales that is 1st January 2015 and 2nd January 2015. Then I simply click to commit. So you can see here this is two days sales. So hope you clear how you will use measure and dates in period table. So this measure is very simple. If you notice this is old table dex query, right? And before this, I simply write calculate dex function, then I use some dex function, then I use comma, and in last I would close the bracket. So you can also use this measure accordingly, simply pass the interval uh, as in form of day, month, quarter and year and also pass the interval number. Suppose you want to get last two month sales, last three month sales. So using dates in period DAX function, you can easily get. Okay, so hope you clear how you will generate the dates using dates in period DAX functions using these DAX functions you can easily generate the date on the basis of given interval in terms of day month and quarter and also you can use this DAX function with measures so it is very useful DAX functions thank you guys